Okay, video three for nutrition and metabolism. Uh, here's where it would get really detailed if I was going to have it get really detailed. So these, I'm just kind of paging through these pages right here, through these screens right here. Uh, in a majors class, you'd probably have to learn uh, most of these um, molecules that are in this reaction set. This is a condensed version, right? So let's just start off and I'll start off, kind of walk us through it. So where are we? We're in the cell and we're in the cytoplasm. So the first step that has to occur is you have to take glucose, which is our beginning molecule. You can see it over here. And I've kind of recorded, uh, I'm writing these 6C in here because I want to keep track of the carbons. We take a six carbon glucose molecule and we actually go through 10 reactions. You only see like two or three here, but there's a step here, step here, step here, step here, this step, split this, split that molecule, step, 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 finished product. So I'm going to contract it down to, you start with a glucose, which has six carbons and you split it into ultimately two pyruvates, which have three carbons each. So we still have all of our carbon. Uh, we haven't lost any. And uh, there are, like I said, 10 reactions. You just have to know that that's the end product are two molecules of pyruvates, uh, that it occurs in the cytoplasm, that it is an anaerobic step. This is an anaerobic step because it doesn't require oxygen. The only step that's going to require oxygen is the last step, step four. Here is what we get out of this reaction set, out of glycolysis. We get two ATPs. We actually made four total, here they are, but we spent two. So the net is two, right? Four minus two is two. Uh, this is made through that process called substrate level phosphorylation. We also get two molecules of NADH, and this is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. You don't have to know that one. You do have to know uh, adenosine triphosphate, but you don't have to know this guy, just know NADH. And think of it like a uh, an electron shuttle. So a shuttle bus, if you've ever taken a shuttle bus at like Six Flags, you'll park way out in the boonies, and then you'll get on this little bus, and it'll take you up to the gate. And then when you're done, you come back out, you get on the shuttle bus, it takes you back to your car. So think of this guy like a shuttle bus for electrons. So it's going to come to glycolysis, it's going to grab some electrons, and then it's going to, we'll see it again later in step four. All right, so whenever you see these blank ADH type things, you'll push those off to the last step. And we get two pyruvate molecules as shown here. These are actually the end products of the reaction. These two pyruvate molecules are going to go to the next step, next reaction set. We're after ATP, so we've already got two. Good job. Uh, if you don't have oxygen, by the way, or if oxygen is limited, you are going to conduct anaerobic respiration, which is kind of indicated down here. Uh, oxygen, we go to the next step. No oxygen, we're going to make lactic acid. We still get the ATP, and you're going to make lactic acid as a temporary uh, byproduct, kind of. You'll convert it back later to pyruvate once you start uh, getting enough oxygen. But we won't go into detail here, but you can conduct anaerobic respiration using sugar. You just don't go past glycolysis. Now, the book and a lot of books will have they'll pay lip service to this. So this is right here, transitional phase, but they've included it with the entire process of uh, the citric acid cycle. I personally separate them. So I'm going to have the first step is glycolysis. The second step is this transition reaction. Transition reaction, where does it occur? Well, it occurs as the pyruvates are moved in. So we've got two pyruvates and we're moving them into the mitochondria. And if you remember, mitochondria are the sites of aerobic cellular respiration. This is a real short step. There's really kind of just a couple of steps to it, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, contract it down to two pyruvate molecules, which have three carbons, become two acetyl-CoA molecules, which have two carbons. Well, if they've lost each of them a carbon, right? So there you can see three of these little spheres represent three carbons. Two of these little spheres represent two carbons. And we're just doubling it because we had two pyruvates from that first uh, glycolysis. So if we've lost carbons, where do they go? Well, here they are, carbon dioxide. We're giving off carbon dioxide. So this is actually carbon. This carbon right here was carbon that was in the pyruvate, which was carbon that was in this glucose, which was carbon that was in whatever you had just eaten. 
So, uh, so you're literally breathe your carbon dioxide that you breathe out is very literally tiny pieces of the food that you've eaten. It doesn't this if you had a pizza, it's not going to be pizza flavored carbon. It's still just a carbon atom, right? But it was a component of that pizza. We do get this bonus here of two NADHs. So we'll see how important those are later. Uh, and next step. So now we go to the citric acid or Krebs cycle. I'll try to call it citric acid cycle. I learned it as Krebs cycle uh, after the uh, person who discovered it. But look at all these steps. Wouldn't that be fun to learn? Well, I had to learn them, but not for ANP. I learned them in like majors and cellular biology. So here's what we'll contract it to. There's our acetyl-CoA. We're going to say two of them, right? We're just going to keep track of all these guys that we made. So we have two acetyl-CoA from two pyruvates from one glucose. So two acetyl-CoA are added to two oxaloacetate. Now oxaloacetate, you see I'm contracting the names. They call it oxaloacetic acid, but we'll call it oxaloacetate just for short. Two of these guys are added to two of these guys. Well, where do we get these guys? Well, you'll when you go take a graduate cell uh, physiology course, you'll learn. But suffice it to say that there's lots and lots of reactions that go on in your body that we're not going to learn about here. So you have acquired or made or otherwise have oxal, uh, sorry, oxaloacetate. You add two of those to two, acet two acetyl-CoAs and you get two citric acids. So we've heard of citric acid, right? So these guys have, the acetyl-CoAs have two carbon, oxaloacetate have four carbon, now we get two six carbon molecules. We can see we're adding, just keeping track. I'm just keeping a running balance. Then reaction, 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 which we're not going to learn. And what happens? Well, we get a total from having both of those acetyl-CoA enter. We get a total of six NADH. We get two FADH2, and that's going to be a related molecule. Again, it's a, an electron courier. And then we get two of those nice ATP that we already had, right? Uh, again, that's substrate level phosphorylation. And by the end of it, we've made our oxaloacetate again, which means we can just keep it coming, right? As long as you're eating sugar, you're going to keep making pyruvate, you're going to keep making acetyl-CoA, you're going to keep doing this. Keep in mind that both glycolysis, the transition reaction, and the citric acid cycle don't require any oxygen. So they are all technically anaerobic steps. Hey, Jay. Uh, my dog's whining. All right, well, I'm almost done. The la fourth and final step, the electron transport chain. Where does it occur? Well, it occurs along the mitochondrial inner membrane. So here we have the mitochondrion uh, cytoplasm. There's two membranes here which aren't shown. They will be shown in the next uh, slide, though. So it's occurring basically in that inner membrane, that kind of wavy one of the mitochondrion. What happens? Well, we've had we if we count up all of our NADHs from the previous steps, we've got 10. We made two in glycolysis. We made two in uh, the transition reaction. Now we have, and then we made six in citric acid cycle. And then of course these two guys. So we add all. We bring all these guys into this uh, system here, bringing their electrons. They're bringing off. They're bringing these high energy electrons that they that they carried with them, and they're going to hand those electrons to the members of this uh, of this electron transport chain. And here's an illustration showing that right here. I'm going to clap to make my dog be quiet. Yeah! So uh, here's the diagram of it. This is a mitochondrion. Here's the outer membrane. Here's the intermembrane space. Here's the inner membrane. All of these little blobs here are members of the electron transport chain. And here is that little NADH guy, and here's FADH2. So they're bringing it in, they're bringing in their electrons and dropping them off. And what I want you to notice is that the electrons are passed from one component to the next component to the next component to the next component. And as they are passed, they drop in potential energy. See this little tunnel that goes through these guys? Well, what, it's, what this tunnel represents is a little channel uh, through which these components of the electron transport chain pump hydrogen into the intermembrane space. So I'm really going to stuff a bunch of hydrogens in there. And I've got that listed back here. So uh, proteins and other molecules pass the electrons along. 
This is redox, uh, redox reactions, and then energy is used to pump the hydrogens, right? So think about this. These guys, these NADH and FADH2s brought in electrons from previous reactions, and they brought them in at a fairly high state of potential energy. As they're passed along and that energy level drops, that energy doesn't go away, it's not gone. Uh, it, it's used, then it's used to stuff this chamber right here with these hydrogens. A lot of things crowded into one space, especially if they're all the same charge, right? These guys are H plus build up what you call an electrochemical gradient. Now we've heard of chemical gradients before or concentration gradients. Well, the electrochemical gradient, it means that you've got a charge and a concentration gradient. So these hydrogens are all stuffed into a box with each other and they really don't want to be there. They repel each other. They disgust each other. They want to get away, but they can't get out of this chamber except through one little secret little channel. And that secret channel is this molecule over here called ATP synthase. So that electrochemical gradient, which is built up, causes them to diffuse back through ATP synthase, and that is an enzyme, and you can guess what it does, synthesizes ATP. That specific process of protons, of hydrogen ions leaking back through ATP synthase is called chemiosmosis. Now, osmosis we learned as being water across a membrane, kind of forget that. It has this, shares the same root, but it's, it's not. This is a specific case of hydrogen ions leaking back through a membrane through that, uh, through that enzyme, through ATP synthase. Using all of that energy from that diffusion, just like water flowing through a, uh, a uh, um, what's it, hydroelectric power uh, generator, right? Water flows through a turbine, spins it, you can generate electricity. Hydrogens flow through ATP synthase and kind of spin it. And that kinetic energy, that potential energy is converted to kinetic energy and you are actually able to add phosphate to, AT, sorry, to ADP. This is oxidative phosphorylation because of all of these oxidative steps that occur, these redox steps. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, da -da -da. Okay, we have to have somewhere to get rid of that electron. Once it gets to the bottom of the ladder, it doesn't just go away. Okay, you can't, nothing can get rid of a, a molecular component for free. You have to have somebody willing to take it. Well, the molecule that's willing to take it, or the atom, I should say, that's willing to take it is, beep, right there. I don't know if you can see that font, but that says, 2H plus plus one half O2. One half O2 is just an oxygen atom. Plus electrons, that's this yellow line, makes water. So as electron, I'm sorry, as oxygen is the final electron acceptor, it's, it's willing to take this really depleted electron. And you combine that with a couple of electrons and a couple of hydrogens and you get H2O, you get metabolic water. You actually make uh, water inside of your cells. It's not enough to survive on. Some mammals can, some animals can. Uh, kangaroo rats can. Uh, they eat nothing but like dry seeds and insects and they never drink water. They make a lot of metabolic water and they don't waste it. They've got good conservation mechanisms. Well, let's sum it up. We got 10 NADH total and two FADH totals, FADH2 totals. Each NADH yields three ATP, 10 times three is 30. Each FADH2 yields two ATP because it enters a little bit lower, a little bit lower energy. So four, 30 plus four, 34. Now that's a bigger number than you're gonna see in a lot of, source, a lot of uh, sources, but I'm rounding up a little bit because it makes the math a lot easier, right? If I said 10, eight, each NADH yields 2.87 uh, ATP, it would be a little bit more difficult. So we just kind of go to three. We get 34 ATPs made in the electron transport chain. Add that to the two from glycolysis, the two from citric acid cycle, which were substrate level, and we get a total of 38 ATPs per glucose under very, very optimal conditions. It's kind of unrealistic, but uh, it, like I said, the math seems easier. And you can get close to that in some cells. Usually it's a bit less because you got to pay the piper when you move uh, NADHs and stuff around, but 
Let's remember this number, 38. And of course, how we got there, right? So I'm gonna go back to the first page here and we have to keep we have to write all these things down right because this is the, the 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 what we produce what we make out of these reactions one time real quick glucose split into two pyruvates six carbons into two three carbons where it occurs what is made transition reaction where it is what it makes citric acid cycle in the mitochondrial matrix what it makes and then lastly, electron transport, getting all of that potential energy from those electrons built up in the previous reactions, uh, and then going through this kind of long, uh, complicated uh, process. All right, that's video three. Sorry it was so long.